you are exiles. We are the exiles. We are the fallen. You made the decision to go after Strange Flesh. This is about one thing. This is about us being consumed by another race. Let's get him in a host body system so we can destroy him. You're a kingdom divided. You're good and evil. You are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. rectify that situation you got to be turned up that's how you know that you know Jesus add up to the scriptures and it's not true. So guys, I'm trying to share with you these phenomenal uh, updates to some of my some of the imagery that the Lord's let me show you guys. Um, uh, we're having some show notes server problems. Just bear with me. All right. So, all right. For, first of all, welcome to this. Is it, guys, God bless you. Um, I'm going to make this a short version. Everyone's like, really? <laughs> Guys, on the video yesterday, I thought it was very important that you hear it over and over and over and over again. That Lucifer, his goal is to arise above the princes of El, which are the stars. Okay, that's Lucifer's goal. If you know what his goal is... And then you know that the Bible says, that Lucifer said, I sit, I sit in the seat of Elohim, and he's in the midst of Elohim, in the midst of the seas. If you know that Lucifer's in the seat of Elohim, in the midst of the seas, if you know that he's the one in the center of Elohim, and then the Bible says in Genesis 1, and Elohim said, let us make man and our representative figure, especially in Allah, then you know for sure that Lucifer is the one running Elohim. He's the one that started the host body system. But see, the Bible says, I create the darkness. This is the Lord God. I create the darkness and I form the light. Well, who created Elohim? El, the Almighty God. What does Elohim do? Forms a host body system, which is what? darkness to shade get it okay so then elohim creates a system that's to shade the host body system then the spiritual man comes in next go read first corinthians 15 then the second man that comes in is the spiritual man from heaven so now we know and it's very obvious and very uh, apparent thou hast said i am l that's what lucifer saying i am l the almighty god he's not l He's, he sits in the midst of Elohim, in the seat of Elohim. So now that's been nailed down, so no one can ever argue with you again. If they try and tell, argue with you, let me show you another scripture that just shuts everything down. And then I want to show you these, these super cool images. Okay, so I want you, when you read this scripture, to imagine the spiritual being that's speaking the scripture through the psalmist. Now watch. It says in verse 5, they know not, I'm going to underline they, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Okay, so very quickly, who is they? It says they do not understand. They know not. They do not understand. They walk on in darkness. So they are walking on in darkness. They're not understanding. 
all the foundations of the earth are out of course. And then it says, I have said, not they. It says, I have said, ye are gods. And I said I was going to change this to pink every time I see it now because uh, the twin female system uh, energy owns it. So I have said, ye are gods. So when we click on that, it's Elohim. It's Hebrew word 430. You should really learn these numbers. Hebrew word 430 is God's is Elohim. I have said you are Elohim and all of you are children of the Most High. The Most High is El Yon and it means the Supreme Most High. The, the highest. So I have said you are God's, you are Elohim and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and shall fall from heaven like one of the princes the magistrates master prince that had that had rule head person that had rule okay so if you're elohim and all of you the bible says i have said ye are elohim all of you are children of elion the most high but you're going to die like men. You will fall like one of the princes. So that's as obvious as it gets. Now, what makes this even more powerful is Jesus quoted the scripture. When they were going to stone Jesus in John chapter 10, the Jews took up the stones to stone Jesus. And, and Jesus stopped and said, well, wait a minute. For what good works are you going to stone me? And the Jews couldn't come up with a reason they said, oh, we're not stoning you for good works, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself equal with God. And so they got it. What's crazy is they got it exactly backwards. <laughs> they said, you being a man, make yourself equal with God. No, he was God making himself equal to a man. You get it so he could buy us back. They had it exactly reversed. So watch, let's go to let's go to John chapter 10 now. So right here, Jesus is going to quote this on him. So Jesus is going to re reach into the word of God and he's going to quote scripture. He's going to say, okay, does not it say in your, in your word, I have said ye are gods? Right here is what he's quoting. So he's quoting Psalm 80, 82 verse 6. And, and watch, watch what happens when he does it. So you go down to John, John chapter 10, down to verse 34, I believe. Uh, 34, yeah. So they're going to stone Jesus and, and they can't. He says, for what good works have I showed you that you're going to stone me for? And they said, not for that, but for blasphemy, because thou, for thee not, but for thou, I'm sorry, for, I'm sorry, guys. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou being a man, makest thyself God. Sorry about all that stuttering there. Uh, okay, so here it is. And Jesus answered them. So now this is, I mean, this is just critical that you understand that Jesus is talking to his own creation. He created Elohim. I create the darkness and I form the light. And now there's a host body system and walking around and it is light and dark. And they want to kill the creator of all things. Isn't it fascinating that when he, when he answers them, he says, is it not written in your law? Look at that. Your law. Is it not written in your law? See, because when you are in the flesh, host by you are under the law. That's why Jesus came to abolish, well, not to abolish, but to fulfill the law. Because he is the fulfillment of the law. So when he takes up residency inside of you, you're no longer under the law. And you're no longer subject to the penalty of the law. The host body system is if you're in the flesh. But that's why we get converted and we live in the spirit now. And we don't fulfill the desires of the flesh. And those are all made manifest. You can go look it up. Uh, all the desires of the flesh, what makes manifest. So Jesus said, is it not written in your law in Psalm 82? I said, ye are gods. And then he says, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. 
Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Um, if I could just throw some out there just on a personal note, I find it fascinating when the Lord has me going around laying hands on people that have terminal diseases in their well, people that are blind and there's people that are legally blind and they see people that have absolutely no vision in one eye. And he had me lay hands on one and his vision was restored in 15 minutes, even though it had a film over his eye. Okay. So the Lord is having me do these crazy works. And then there's people out there that are trying to tell the rest, Oh, this guy collects a false problem. Why would you do that? The Bible says these signs will accompany those that believe on my name. They'll lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. They'll speak in tongues. The the language I'm showing you, you know, like Detective Spooner's badge and all that, that's the language of angels, guys. What it is. The, the ability to show you the way they communicate the language of angels. And so I'm manifesting the very works that the Bible says. Isn't it weird all these other people that, I guess they're self-appointed false prophet hunters. <laughs> I get myself a badge. Oh, uh, yeah, he's a false prophet. Well, wait, y'all aren't doing any of the works that I'm doing. The Lord has me doing these supernatural works. All you got to do is come to the channel, go to the folders. Just look at the folders. And then look at the trips, Chinati and Kill Devil Hills and Black Rock and all the miraculous things he's had me do and document. But isn't it weird that someone would attack that? That's kind of, anyway, it's delusional. But the Bible says in the end, because they had pleasure in unrighteousness, God will send them strong delusion. So I want you, if you're watching this video, I want you to have the solid rock. This is being on the rock, knowing there's a right side up and an upside down paradigm in the system. That's why Jesus even told Peter, his name was son of Jonas. He said, Simon, son of Jonas, I'm going to call you Petros, which means little piece of rock. And then he says, and upon this rock, Petra, I'm going to build my church. And I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to give them to you right now. Ready? Here it is. Here's the system. You have one eye up and one eye down. Just like Jesus was crucified right side up, Peter was crucified upside down. But Peter had the key. Let's turn it the other way. There you go. That's the key to the kingdom of heaven. That's knowing the absolute truth of the system. You see, it's the most simple thing in the world, but it's the most paradoxical. Okay, so back to Lucifer real quick, and then we're going to look at some super cool pictures. Okay, so Lucifer, he sits in the seat of Elohim. It says, thou hast said, I am El. So here he is. He's trying to say he's El, the almighty God right here. That because thou, thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am L, the Almighty God. I'm going to change L to bright green. It's going to be bright green from now on. I am L, the Almighty God. I sit in the seat of Elohim's always going to be pink now. So we always delineate it pink. There it is, pink. Because thou hast said, I am L, the Almighty God, I sit to sit down specifically as a judge in ambush, in quiet, in the seat, the population of Elohim. Okay, now, can anyone argue that the Bible just told you exactly who Lucifer is and what he's saying? Because he's saying he's El, the Almighty God. He's not. But he sits in the seat of Elohim, so he's like, hey, I sit in the seat of Elohim. So he's got all the Elohim that he's taken control of because he's in the midst of you. That's why... He, that's what inverted you. The, the flesh is what inverts you. And so he sits in the center of that whole system. Isn't it interesting that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in the midst of the garden? And then if you want to, if you want to have eternal life, you have to reach forth your hand and take again from the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Isn't that fascinating? Have you ever seen the movie or the symbol for the guy in Deadpool? So it's kind of interesting to me the, the the way they do the Deadpool thing. Here you go, like right here. Like Deadpool, see, in the midst. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then tree of life in the midst, see? 
So here's a good idea to think of in the midst of the garden. So think of a circle, think of a dot on one side in the center, dot on the other side in the center. And now the Lord's let me understand everything's about two eyes, guaranteed. One eye is a dimension. Think of a wormhole that goes to a dimension called heaven. And then in the center, you have a snow globe, double-sided snow globe. And then coming out, going the other direction, you have a wormhole that goes into the eternal abyss. It's just absolutely perfectly understandable now. And so the one that pays the price for your body that you're in is El, the Almighty God. And that's because he comes into the system in the likeness of sinful flesh and that's why it says you will call him Emmanuel. So everybody knows who he is. He comes in as Emmanuel. Why do you think all the all the um, other people wanted to kill him? Because they're all under condemnation. So uh, if Lucifer's in the midst of the seas, well, if they know that the Almighty God has shown up, they're like, kill him. We don't want him here. That means trouble. But killing him was the very way that would destroy them. Because then he ascended into heaven and opened the door for us, to, for our salvation, that we're able to receive him as a spiritual conversion and go back. It's all perfect. It's just perfection. It's mind-boggling. Okay, so now back to the scriptures. What what scriptures do you all know? Just stop and think. What do you know that show that Elohim is not the Almighty? Psalm 82 shows it. Jesus affirms it in John 10. Ezekiel 28 shows it. Thou hast said, I am El. So if he's not El, then who is he? So Lucifer is not El right there. It says it. He's not the Almighty God right here. It says it. Thou hast said, I am El. So, but we know he's not El. And then he's bragging because he says, I sit to sit down as a judge in ambush in the seat in the population assembly dwelling place of Elohim. So now he's bragging because he's like, hey, I sit in the seat of Elohim, the gods. And so now you know exactly who he is. Now Isaiah 14 once. So here we go. He says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. And we all know now that that means a canopy to fill up the hollows and to cover self with flesh. So there it is. I will exalt my throne. The word throne means threat flesh. And then to fill up hollows, because that's what's going on in the pit. They're filling up the hollows for the worms that are feeding on us. I will exalt my throne above the stars, the princes of El, the Almighty God. I will sit. There it is again. I will sit down, specifically as judge in ambush and quiet. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. So the congregation. So that shows you exactly who Lucifer is. Elohim. He is the one in the center, in the midst of Elohim. Okay, well then... Who's the one that created the host body system? So who created the male and female host body system? Genesis 1, Elohim. So that's why we have to be redeemed. Now you know exactly why you got to be redeemed. So Elohim created man in his own image. So there it is, Elohim. Let's make it pink. So Elohim created man in his own image. I'm going to make that a little bit lighter, easier to see, light blue. There we go. In his own image, in the image of Elohim, created he him. So you see, he him, Lucifer. Male and female created he them. So he's going to make the flesh, right now he's making the flesh. He's going to make it male and female because an angel that comes in, see, you don't know when you're an angel, when you come in, male and female genitalia doesn't mean a thing. Your essence is male. It's our father that he's that ever flowing, producing uh, light that never stops producing. Just think of photons of light just self-perpetuating. Like the Tron movie, if you ever saw it, those light beams coming out of nowhere. So anyway, then Lucifer tries and takes over the whole thing. The princes of El, by giving them host bodies in order to trap them to convert them to locusts from the pit. Now that now we have a model, and think about this, guys. The model matches everything the Lord's let me show you in imagery. Do you know how 
do you all understand that the imagery, being able to see that the Vatican's a snake, the largest altar in the world's a dead sheep? Do you understand that seeing the imagery, the imagery is the confirming witness to the Bible? So the Bible says, those who try and hide their plans turn everything upside down. But what does that mean? Who cares? But when you turn the virgin upside down and it's a dead sheep, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Why is it a dead sheep? Well, we're the sheep. And when you see the altar inside the Vatican, the mouth, of the of the serpent when you realize that the dead sheep is made up of all god's angels and then you have a guy that's talking to you that has that's had all these people manifest hey johnny i drew a picture of you who would draw a picture of somebody i mean don't you find that weird i think it's super weird so yeah and then he put a dead sheep behind my ear so how fascinating how absolutely fascinating. So that just simply means I was being hunted. Obviously, I was being hunted by Elohim throughout the Lucifer, throughout the system. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've got some stories that would make your hair stand up on the back of your neck. Anyway, so here we go. Let's look at the imagery now, guys. Now let's look at this super cool imagery in the folders. Okay, you guys remember the $10 bill? Again, thank you very much to the subscriber that took the time to do this with the imagery. Look at that. There is the $10 bill out of the sea, shock and fire and smoke and devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea. There is that water as high as the walls of Jerusalem, the Lord let me prophesy. There it is coming over. It's on your U.S. currency notes. I mean, so you guys understand how serious this is, right? That, that, there's new bombings on our money. The old bombings, the Twin Towers and, and all those, uh, Federal Building Bombing, Twin Towers, and and uh, the Pentagon, those are printed on our bills. They've already happened. So they're just using the money as a vehicle to show their plans and to show who's in control, thinks they're in control. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now watch. So that is the tidal wave coming over the building. I just want to share these with you because he took the time to do them. It's just did such a phenomenal job. There's a hundred dollar bill. Hopefully this thing's all going to work. I was having a little trouble with the program. All right, folks. So I want you to look and, and this is uh, the temporary folder for video. That's the title, but look right here, starting where the Ouroboros is right here, the serpent eating its own tail, which is right side up, upside down stars right here. That's an angel demon system and the serpent eats it. So here are all these new images that, that, you know, do this. Let me, let me show you this. That do what this locust does. They all do it. Okay. Now I want to show you something. The row down here where you see the Ouroboros starting right here. If you click on any of these pictures, it should do what you just saw the locust do. Or it should do the same thing you'll see Audience Hall do. Just transform right before your very eyes. Uh, like I said, phenomenal just to get to see it like this. What a cool way to be able to display it. It makes it so real. It's like, yeah, that's a building that's built to represent what you're looking at. It's just mind-boggling. So the, the Pope literally stands in between two fangs of a serpent while he's talking to the audience the congregation i will sit in the seat of elohim the the congregation i mean this is just beyond busted so here you go so but let me show you something that's going on with these images and i want to show you what you can do so i started clicking on these and we just populated them and some of them don't seem to be doing what they're they're, they're little things, so it may take a little while of of uh, messing with the program to get them to work for you. But in the interim, let me show you what to do. So if you want to see all these images do their cool thing, just go back up here. If you go right back up here to the links, it says GIF videos. So let's watch them one at a time. Let's do the $10 bill. Okay, so there's there you go. There's the $10 bill. Super cool job. Okay, so then let's do the the $100 bill right here. Okay, 
So there's the hundred dollar bill, the three layers of ink. And say so just out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. There it is, printed on your hundred dollar bill. I mean, that's just beyond my brain, guys. It's just there's a hundred dollar bill out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. And you just saw the tidal wave. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem. So if you go to the links right here, it says gifts. See, it says gift videos right here. And just work your way down. I want to I wanna press on everyone. Let's do the Twin Tower sculpture next. Okay, this is kind of cool because it's uh, a sculpture of the Twin Towers and the smoke. See the smoke coming off the building? Look what it turns into. So the sculptor knew... Or what was running the sculptor, you have the virgin, the female, that's, cause remember, the whole system is female. Remember that. That's why the Twin Towers is being held by the virgin. The female owns this. Listen, the Bible says, come out of her, my people. See, because we're light beings and we went into her. Just because you're walking around in his body, you're attached to the other side now. Come out of her, my people, by turning back to your God, the Almighty God, El, the Almighty God. And Jesus is with us as El, Emmanuel. So watch this change. See it? It's a dragon. The smoke becomes a dragon. Look at that. So look at the smoke. And it becomes a dragon. Now all this stuff, this is all stuff that the Lord has shown me. Did you know there's 40 thousand images in the show notes <laughs> 40,000 and so this you know this uh, subscriber he took the time to take some of this imagery and really help it come alive for you guys I mean awesome job really awesome to be able to present it and just let you see well if you look at the original sculpture there it is that might not look like a lot to you, but then when you realize the dragon is coming out of the twin system in the virgin, what? That's not good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a good thing. Uh-huh. So now here's a really good one. Y'all remember Ramsey's from the, from the uh, Ten Commandments? Okay, this one's doing a little bit different. Watch this. Here we go. There you go. Look at Ramses. He's the, they're the serpent people. So think of ancient Egypt. Why did they wear those headdresses? Because it makes them look like a damn snake, like a cobra. Look. Dude, there you go. They're the serpent race. Where did the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti come from, ancient Egypt? What's it about? It's about a serpent race impregnating that girl on her knees, creating a hybrid race. That's got a dead sheep in the head of the kid and a reptile benefiting off the dead sheep. Look at this. I mean, this is really good. Look. There it is. Okay, so there you go. The Egyptians. They're the serpent race. Okay, well, they're, they're the original. What I'm saying is they're the ones mentioned. Okay, here we go. Next, sheep on tattoo. So I'm going to enlarge this. Okay, look at this. All right, one more time. Look at the head of the sheep turns into the angel kissing the woman. Because you see, here's the angel's head right here. Here's the woman. So right side up and upside, one facing opposite directions. But when you rotate the whole thing sideways, this whole thing's the face of the sheep where that's the eye, that's the nose. That's the lip, bottom bottom jaw, nostril, top of the head, ear. So what a phenomenal image. What a just phenomenal image. Let's watch it one more time. Watch this. I mean, that's phenomenal. That is just phenomenal. Okay, next. Okay, sorry guys. St. Peter's Basilica to Serpent. Here we go. There you go. So there's the Basilica. Uh -huh. So the whole Vatican is that of a serpent wearing a crown. That's just crazy. And there it is. Nice transformation. Mm-hmm.
So we have a building where people go in and sing to Lucifer donning his own creation. And it happens to be a, a serpent wearing a crown. Here's St. Stephen's Cathedral. The organ turns into a sheet. The whole organ at St. Stephen's uh, Cathedral, that's the organ. And it turned, that's all a sheep. That's a big dead sheep. Again, at another cathedral. Okay, let's keep going. Here's the Vatican altar that turns to an insect. This is phenomenal. I've shown you guys this one many times. Let's do that again. Here we go. Watch. So there it is. So that's definitely an insect. The whole thing's an insect. So, and it's harvesting semen, which is the angels. So, so now let me ask you just a, a, a question about logic. If you know that in the pit is a race of locusts, insects, so the pit has a race of locusts, supernatural locust insects that are going to come out of the pit and they have a king over them that is Satan. Wouldn't it make total sense that the altar is a big, a big hidden in plain sight bug? Of course it would. Cause the Prince of Darkness is right in front of your face, but you can't see it because you're, you're half asleep. But when you get converted and your eyes become single, you can see it all like, whoa, because the angel of the bottomless pit had the king is called Apollyon, Satan. And it says the locusts have a king over them, which is Satan. So if you have a big uh, altar, that's a big bug. Who is it? Is there a king Satan? But see, here's the part that's just so mind boggling. The whole thing has to get down to the energy level so people understand the twin female energy. And they manifest it by doing, you know, Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the world. They have him in between two women. So that's, that's kind of the manifestation here in the host body system. And they show that on the eye of the dragon in the Vatican, the two X and the two X with the guy as the nose of the dragon. We'll see that in just a minute. So see, this is all perfection. This is beyond the human brain. Okay. One more time. So there's the bug. It transforms in. There it is. That's the Vatican. And then, yep, it's just a bug. So that's their king. So it may, it would make sense to have the altar uh, represent or reflect their king, wouldn't it? It would make all the sense in the world. So we saw audience hall, Vatican sheet. Let's do this one. So here we go. There's the altar. I mean, that's really good. So there's, there's the big altar of all the angels turning into the sheep. One more time. There's the altar. Very good. One more time. Okay, the Sistine Chapel. This is phenomenal. Watch this, you guys. Watch this. Okay, the Sistine Chapel. Look at the dragon. I mean, just phenomenal. So, y'all can see that that whole thing's a dragon, right? Now, imagine. So, he's he's taking the dragon that's painted on the wall and just morphing it into an actual dragon so your mind can make the transition this is phenomenal for your mind then think about that a human being painted that wall and knew to paint a moat in one eye that was falling down and knew to paint a beam in the other eye that was being erected on top of the line of the tribe of judah do you know how crazy that is you guys <laughs> it's like wait yes so the whole agenda is done in front of you in plain sight. But now we can see that the other half did it controlling Michelangelo. That's why Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because see, the guy that's painting that wall of that dragon, do you think he's like, oh, okay, today I'm going to paint the eye of the dragon. Tomorrow I'm going to work on the nose. No, he was just like, yeah, just, he was controlled by the angel of the bottomless pit to do that. It's a phenomenal artwork i mean just look at what it is phenomenal artwork it's a the whole thing's a dragon though and he painted that and that's what it represents right there 
and it's hidden in plain sight, which makes which makes the whole thing, that's the thing that makes this so important. It's hidden in plain sight. Well, by virtue of the fact that I can see it and I can show it to you, what does that mean for Satan's kingdom? Not good. It means it's over. Because this, in the end, everything secret will be made public. Okay, so then I'm going to show you a couple more. Okay, Sistine Chapel, Vatican slave to demon. Okay, this is the this is our condition in the slave collar. And here you go, watch. So it colors in. You can see the the beast slave collar representing the angel right here and the beast slave collar. You got the twin on both sides. Okay, now we'll go to the next one. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is from overhead. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to kind of move this a little bit for you guys. Okay, that's the Vatican right there. And here's the keyhole. But here's the part that's fascinating. You see right? Okay, right here. This is a sheep with it, the whole building, the whole castle is inside of a five-pointed star. See the five-pointed star made by the sheep, by the streets, I'm sorry, with the sheep in the middle. Watch this. Just watch. So here's the Vatican right here, but it's a key. See the shaft of the key going down to the five-pointed star with the sheep in the middle, and the whole the whole sheep thing is a mausoleum. I mean, that's just mind-boggling. And what happens if you turn this upside down? See, see, he knows he has the key, and he builds it into the architecture of all the buildings around there? <laughs> Beyond the human brain. Uh -huh. Yes, that's exactly what he did. Lucifer, when I say he, Lucifer did it. Okay, now one more time, virgin to upside down sheep. There you go. Wow, there you go. So that's what the virgin equals, a dead sheep. And who's the sheep? Where are the sheep? What's, what's the whole, uh, what's the whole altar in the Vatican that the, the insect is eating? The whole thing's a sheep made up of a bunch of angels. So who's killing it? The virgin. The virgin is killing the sheep. You all understand now? This is just beyond the human brain. Okay, I'm going to let this little video just stand alone. Hopefully everything's working. I'm, I'm concerned I'm having some more, you know, problems here with equipment and stuff. All right, guys, I love you in Christ. Uh, I'll be back quick.